What's up guys and welcome back to lesson 2. For lesson 2, we'll be dealing with limits of algebraic functions. For our learning objectives, so at the end of this lesson, you will be able to first illustrate the limit loss and second, apply the limit loss in evaluating limits of algebraic functions, so algebraic functions namely polynomial, rational, and radical functions. So first, we need to know what are these limit laws. Limit laws, these are basic theorems or properties that make evaluating limits easier. So we will state eight theorems, so we will actually just deal with the basic theorems. This will enable us to directly evaluate limits without the need for the table or a graph. So this will be the other uh, method to solve for the limit of a function. Theorem number one, we have constant rule. So this states that the limit of a constant is itself. So in symbols, we have this. If k is a constant, then the limit of k as x approaches c is just k itself. Let's have some examples. So for example, number one, limit of two as x approaches five, so again, we have 2 here. It's a constant. So the answer is just the constant itself. So the answer for this is 2. So regardless, regardless of x approaching 5, the limit is just the constant itself. So it's 2. How about number 2? So we have negative 2 pi as x approaches 1 half. Remember that pi is also a constant equals 3.14. Okay, so the answer for this is just the constant itself because again, there is no variable x, so it's just a constant. So we have negative 2 pi. Okay, and lastly, we have limit of 54 as x approaches positive infinity. So this is actually possible. So our x is approaching infinity, but regardless of this scenario here, regardless of x approaching infinity, remember that this is still a constant, a constant function. So this is just 54. So from these examples, you, you will realize that no matter what or how x approaches to a certain constant, the answer will be the constant function itself. Theorem number two. We have substitution rule, so this states that the limit of our function f of x as x approaches c is equal to the function evaluated at c, f of c, if the limit exists. This will be thought of as the substitution. Limit of f of x as x approaches c equals f evaluated at c. This is a very powerful theorem because we don't need to create a table of values to find the limit we just need to use the concept of substitution as long as again there is a condition here the limit exists examples let's try we have limit of 3x plus 1 as x approaches 2 so instead of creating a table of values we can actually use substitution so we have 3 times so when our x is 2 approaching 2 so we can substitute 2 plus 1 so this gives us 6 plus 1 which is 7 so if you can remember this is our example in the prior lesson lesson number one all right let's have number two so limit of 3x squared minus 5x plus 1 so again we can use substitution we have 3 times 3 squared minus 5 times 3 plus 1 so this will give us 9 9 times 3 is 27 minus 15 plus 1 so 27 minus 15 is 12 12 plus 1 is 13 so the answer is 30 
third theorem, we have the constant multiple unit. So, from the term constant multiple, it's a multiple, a number, which is a multiple of the limit or the function. So, this says that the limit of a multiple of a function is simply the multiple of the limit of a function. So, symbolically, we have this. The limit of k times f of x as x approaches c equals k times the limit of f of x as x approaches c. So, if you try to observe, our k just transfer or factored out, out of the limit or from the limit. Okay? Examples, so we have number one, limit of four times the quantity of x plus one squared as x approaches four. So again, we can use the constant multi multiple theorem or rule. So we have four times the limit of x plus one squared as x approaches four. Then using our previous theorem, theorem number two, Substitution, so we have 4 times, so our x is 4, so we have 4 plus 1 squared. And this will give us 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 squared is 25, 4 times 25, which is, 4 times 25 is 100. So the answer for this one is 100. For number 2, let f of x equals to x plus 1. Find the limit of 2 times f of x as x approaches 2. Okay, so to solve, we can actually have... Oh, let's try to use another color. So, apply the constant multiple rule first because we have this here. So, we'll now have 2 limit of f of x as x approaches 2. Okay, then, since our f of x is 2x plus 1, so this is our f of x, we can substitute 2x plus 1 to our f of x, and this will give us limit of 2x plus 1 as x approaches 2. Okay, then, apply substitution rule for this limit here. So, we will have 2 times, so this becomes 2, so our x is approaching 2, so we substitute 2 to our x, so we have 2 plus 1. So this is 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5, so we'll have 2 times 5, which will give us 10 as our limit. So the limit for this function here, this function here, is 10. Theorem number 4, we have the sum and difference rule. This says that the limit of a sum of functions is the sum of the limits of the individual functions. So aside from the sum, we also have subtraction. It is also included in this law or theorem. That is to say the limit of difference of functions is the difference of their limits. Or we can write this symbolically like this. We have the limit of f of x plus minus, so either add or subtract, g of x as x approaches c equals the limit of f of x plus minus limit of g of x as x approaches c. So again, it's stated here that uh, it's for the sum and difference. And when we talk about sum and difference, it can be applied to multiple functions. So we can actually add here another function plus minus hx plus minus uh, ix so on and so forth. Let's have the example. We have f of x equals 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 and g of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Find these two. A limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches 1 and b limit of f of x minus g of x as x approaches 1. Answering letter a, so we have this f of x 
plus g of x as x approaching 1 and using the sum and difference rule we will have the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 plus the limit of g of x as x approaches 1 then we substitute the functions f of x and g of x so we'll have the limit of f of x is 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 as x approaches 1 plus the limit of g of x which is sorry g of x is x squared which is x squared minus 2x plus 1 as x approaches 1 then using our substitution rule so here we substitute our values so at 1 so we have here we will have 3 times 1 squared is just 3 plus 2 times 1 is 2 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6 so the answer for the first part is 6 so just copy plus here so plus then for the g of x function again x is approaching 1 so you have 1 squared which is 1 minus 2 negative 1 2 times 1 is uh, 2 so negative 1 negative 1 plus 1 is 0 so the answer is 0 here Hence, the final answer is 6. This is the end of part 1. So for the continuation of the discussion, we'll be discussing uh, theorems number 5, 6, 7, and 8 on the next video. See you there.